Well, to Edo State, where a vehicle powered by compressed natural gas has exploded near a fuel station in Aduawa, a town on the outskirts of uh, the capital, Benin City. Three people were injured in the blast. The presidential CNG initiative says the car was an illegally modified vehicle. Sources say the explosion was traced to a cylinder that had been fabricated by a welder without proper approval. The organization said the police and regulatory authorities are undertaking a painstaking investigation into the incident. It comes on the heels of concerns raised by some members of the public over the safety of compressed natural gas or CNG. Well, for more on those concerns, uh, let's bring in the coordinator of regulatory compliance and facilitation at the presidential CNG initiative, Zayan Yabu. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Uh, to think that Edo State uh, is at the forefront of CNG before it became a national you know, drive, uh, one would have thought that uh, they were far ahead in compliance. Uh, let's start by asking what your office has been able to uh, gather from that very incident in Benin City. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, it is unfortunate the incident that had happened and uh, we commiserate with those that were injured and impacted uh, by the incident and uh, luckily there were no uh, fatalities. There are three injuries, two are serious and one has been discharged out of hospital and uh, we are monitoring closely you know, the development uh, in that regard. And we wish them quick and uh, speedy recovery. Now, Benin, as you rightly observed, was the pilot uh, case for CNG in Nigeria. In 2012, about uh, 12 years ago, the first five pilot uh, CNG stations uh, were commissioned in, in, in Benin, in Edo State. And they have been operating quite uh, without any incident uh, until now. You will agree with me that in the last uh, one year, since the presidential uh, CNG initiative was uh, flagged up by the president, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a lot of activities have been going on uh, in the sector. And at the pace at which uh, those developments were happening, you will expect some unscrupulous elements to want to take advantage of the growing interest uh, in that sector to, to do some things that are outside the, the, the scope uh, of the regulation. And preliminary reports uh, from the incident showed that the cylinder that exploded was locally you know, uh, fabricated, which is an illegality. And the police and the regulatory agencies uh, are taken up on that. But by and large, the presidential CNG initiative has a robust uh, regulatory framework mm -hmm. where all the regulatory bodies uh, that are involved in the CNG ecosystem in the CNG value chain uh, sit and monitor on a real-time day-to-day basis all the regulatory concerns uh, from the kits and the cylinders they are manufacturing those that are manufactured in country and those that are imported and then the conversion centers uh, are also under regulatory purview of uh, NADDC Nigerian Automotive Design and Development Council the standard organization of Nigeria is responsible for standards of manufacturing. Right. And well, the uh, Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority is responsible for you know, facilities like retail outlets. Uh, and then the Road Safety Commission also can play a strategic role in ensuring that vehicles on the road mm. can be stopped and then uh, can be checked. Now, you said it all, really. I mean, there's a long chain <coughs> of gatekeepers you know, to ensure that uh, this kind of uh, unscrupulous uh, behavior does not, uh, you know, get totally out of hand. Now, and this really has heightened uh, the fear of Nigerians for uh, CNG. Some are already saying, no, 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 count me out of, you know, this CNG uh, conversion because they don't understand. Now, as a layman, I go to um, what exactly do I need to look out for? First of all, where do I need to start from to ensure that I don't, uh, become a victim of this, uh, you know, uh, unscrupulous um, activities? Okay, first and foremost, we should only patronize duly accredited conversion centers. And you can check their status on mm. our various uh, handles and various applications. Uh, you can see where you can find uh, these uh, conversion centers. Right. And they are registered, you can check them. Mm. So do not patronize any quack 
or any mechanic or any unauthorized person who may claim that he can convert uh, vehicles. So only go to duly accredited uh, conversion centers. But how do you differentiate between the original, you know, the proper installation, the proper gadget? Okay, now there is the Nigerian the Gas Vehicle, vehicle. Monitoring System, mm. which uh, we are instituting. The Nigerian Gas Vehicle Monitoring System is a web-based system that allows you to check the veracity, the credibility, and the authenticity of all the kits, the cylinder itself, the connections, the conversion centers, even the technical competence of the technicians that are doing the conversion. Then when you get to the retail outlet, the attendant, before he dispenses foil, he can use an application which we call a CNG inspector. Using the plate number of the vehicle, he will check and he will get an instant response on the conversion and credibility status of that vehicle before he can dispense foil. So that will ensure an end-to-end -end integrity of the entire CNG transportation ecosystem. And that Nigerian Gas Vehicle Monitoring System is at the final stages of being completed and it will soon be uh, rolled out when all the tests. In fact, we have done a series of tests at various retail outlets to check you know, and then we are doing all that back-end confirmations to ensure that once it is launched, that it is going to ensure that there is credibility, there is reliability, there is authenticity, and then, of course, there will be acceptability of CNG by Nigerians. We are working around the corrupt You, you know, that acceptability is, uh, is uh, sitting on, uh, uh, on uh, a very, very bad, uh, you know, pedestal at the moment yeah. because of what's just happened in Edo State. Typically we understand CNG is stored at around between 3,000 and 3,006 PSI and if there's a leak then it becomes so dangerous. Uh, with what's happening in Nigeria now there's every chance that you still will have people who will go into the business of uh, manufacturing mm -hmm. these cylinders. So it comes back to regulation. Uh, how much of it are you doing? Because it goes beyond having those uh, agencies you just reeled yeah. out. Uh, how effective uh, is your office in ensuring that we don't have uh, quacks uh, around uh, these places? Or if we have people that need to be trained by your office, let us in on that. Yeah, to reiterate what I have said, first thing we did, uh, we have a directorate under the presidential CNG uh, program, which is the regulatory compliance and facilitation, which I am the coordinator of that directorate. And the role of that directorate is to put all the regulatory bodies in one room. And uh, in those meetings, people who can take decisions are sitting in that room, and decisions are taken, and every time we are checking, we are getting feedback. In fact, uh, as unfortunate as that incident is, without what we are doing, probably you may have seen, you know, more incidences of that nature. You cannot rule out incidences in, in the energy sector. You just did a footage of a report of, of, of a tanker that, uh, that went down. Incidences do happen. What is most important is what code of practice do you have in place? What compliance mechanism do you have in place? And you learn from every incident and make sure that such an incident does not happen again. And we have seen where the challenge is, and we are going to block those loopholes. And the Nigerian Gas Vehicle Monitoring System is going to be an effective tool, a game changer, that will ensure that no quack can operate. Because you cannot even buy gas if you are not certified that your car is duly converted. So that is the right. game changer in this. Very uh, quickly, system. are you telling Nigerians today that uh, with all of these factors in place, that the CNG is fail proof or are there are factors that can actually render CNG it easy? CNG is, is safe if you go to the science or the chemistry of, of hydrocarbons uh, CNG is, is a much much safer hydrocarbon in terms of its handling than even the liquid variants and it's for simple reason because it is lighter than air so it's less dense than air so it means when it leaks it will simply dissipate and evaporate so it will not be easy to catch fire and the ignition point of CNG is about 500 degrees centigrade. So you need a very high heat source to be able to activate fire in the CNG scenario. And then to achieve the saturation vapor pressure that is necessary for CNG to burn is also very high. So the combustion you know, coefficient, the requirements for CNG to burn are actually very higher compared to PMS, 
and right. diesel. So okay. from the science and chemistry right. of CNG, it is a intrinsically safer fuel. So it's a question of handling and right. what we do. And then we are going to make sure that we drum the right lessons, the right knowledge, so that the right code of conduct, the right practices yeah. Yeah. are, are, are Thank consolidated. Thank you so much. Zayano Yabo is coordinator, regulatory compliance and facilitation uh, presidential CNG initiative. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having joining me. us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.